now that you understand the five step process for having a confident and feminine posture let's look at some of the other aspects of your posture and your body language which will help you to portray yourself in a very feminine and confident way the first thing that you have to understand is that being feminine has a lot to do with being open if you look at the anatomy of the female body you will know that it is more open to receive if you have a very closed body language if we are very closed then we are not showing our feminine or our vulnerable side so we have to open up a little bit how do we incorporate openness in our body body language well look at your body and think of your shoulders and create an invisible line think as if there is an invisible line along the lines of your shoulder draw two vertical invisible lines next draw a horizontal line from your waist so you have two invisible lines along your shoulders and you have one horizontal line along your waist next whenever you are using your hands try to keep your hands outside the invisible lines so you don't bring your hands inside the invisible lines and you don't take your hands below the invisible line why this is the case see when you're trying to show yourself in a feminine way in a softer way you have to show a little vulnerable side of yourself so if i take my hands and i keep it like this or keep it like this or keep it like this i am showing that i'm not open so i have to be a little vulnerable and show my bust area and not close it off next is my groin area i don't want to stand like this because it comes across as if i am being very defensive so what i have to do is always remember my invisible lines and keep my hands outside my invisible lines now does it mean that i will be never you know taking my hands inside these lines of course not but remember this area and remember the area below your horizontal line so do not cross your hands like this do not cross your hands like this always ensure that your hands are typically outside your invisible vertical as well as horizontal lines the next thing that you have to practice is how do you place your hands when you are standing or you are talking or you are you know walking so if you notice a lot of women who are very elegant they avoid sudden distracting movements so one great way to stand is to keep both of your hands on your waist but you don't just go down like this no always have an elegant way of moving your hands what you can do is let's say you're keeping your hands on your waist keep one hand down keep the other hand down one hand goes up other hand goes up avoid this avoid this avoid sudden movements make it more elegant so let's say you're standing do this and do this take one hand down take the other hand down this will help you to build that grace and that elegance that will be able to give you the confidence of being feminine in front of the public the next thing that you have to also practice and always keep in mind is your hip women have a practice of showing these small small things which make them more feminine 
but when it comes to cross dressers or transgender people we don't know about these small small nuances i have always noticed you know cross dressers and transgender people to sit on their hips let me show you what i mean by that so you will always notice that girls stand like this so what they are doing is they are putting the entire weight of their body on one leg it may seem okay but it is not very feminine so instead of putting all your weight on one leg one great way to increase or enhance your femininity instantly is to elevate your hips what you can do is this let's say you standing like this using the five step uh, process just take one hip and elevate it a little bit so you can practice it this way on the other side so this is how you would not naturally stand using the five step process and all you have to do is elevate elevate if you can use you know the five step process and learn how to elevate your hips naturally which will again come from practice you will see that you are able to stand out among so many people just because of your body language so keep these things in mind practice it as much as you can whenever you get time and you will see over a period of time that going from this or a natural masculine posture or a posture which doesn't show confidence to a posture which instantly makes you look feminine and confident becomes easy let's talk about how do we stand in public when we are in a crowd when there are people around us and we are not very conscious of how our body is one great way to ensure that we have a very feminine appearance through our body language is to stand in such a way where we are not looking as if we are taking a lot of space women tend to take less space than men because the natural masculine you know energy is to conquer is to have more area to have more authority to have more territory and being feminine is the exact opposite being feminine means you want to take less space so how do we do that in public so you already know the five step process you already know how to you know place your hands you already know how to use your hips to be more feminine but let's see you know let's say you are in a public space and or let's say you know you are taking pictures and there are people around you and you want to look very feminine in you know from a front angle so how you can do this is very simple let's say there is a person right in front of you like this or let's say there is a camera doesn't matter never stand face to face like this you have to ensure that you take less space and the best way to do that is to stand at a slight angle when you stand at a slight angle you are reducing the overall width of your body we are anyway born with a masculine body which has naturally wide shoulders so if i stand like this i will be covering way more space than if i stand at an angle so what it does is it reduces the width of my shoulders also when it comes to the waist area a smaller waist appears more feminine so if you look at it from the front this is the width of my waist but if i slightly turn a little bit then the width of my waist reduces so always stand at an angle whenever you are dealing with people 
the other thing is about your legs and lower body so just like your upper body you don't want to take too much space with your legs so we have already learned in the five step process that our knees and legs should be together the other thing that you can also practice is to keep one foot in front of the other let me show you how stand at an angle that's it i will do that again always stand at an angle stand at an angle one leg in front of the other so your knees are together one leg in front of the other so these are the tips that you have to remember whenever you are in a standing posture